Song Dynasty, exploring the history and charm of one of China's most fascinating dynasties. Episode 12, Old Skills, New Rules, Dangerous Times. In this podcast, we meet some of the lay and imperial characters who proved that the calligraphy brush can sometimes be mightier than the sword. I'm Bob Jones, and in this Why We Love the Sung Dynasty podcast, I'm throwing the spotlight on what was to become one of China's most iconic dynasties in the country's long and colourful history. Ideally, we would have pictures to go along with this edition of the podcast. It would be great to show you examples of the various styles, the trends, and the way that calligraphy developed during the Sung period. Can't be done in a podcast, but we can focus on the personalities and events that had a role to play in bumping things along. Clearly, our friends, the Sung calligraphers, didn't hide away in a crystal box, creating their works in isolation. Very much the opposite. They were well-educated, had status in society, and many were close to the dynasty's movers and shakers. Some were even highly trusted advisers. But as courtiers in ancient Egypt often found out, it wasn't always possible to have a job for life. If you were lucky, then when a new pharaoh came along, you'd retreat into the background and drink tea in a tea house away from the limelight. The unlucky ones were often buried with the old pharaoh. What have we learned so far about the status and development of calligraphy in Sung society? Its popularity was intimately connected with weakness at the top. Emperors preferred to paint, draw and take part in calligraphy than defend the realm. With few military victories to celebrate, the skills were transferred instead to domestic, civil celebrations and observations. There was a rise in religion and a focus on a rule-based society. That created more opportunities for opinion and considered thought. A change in the way people learned through copying rather than lessons meant there was a disconnect between teacher and pupil and the quality of calligraphy suffered. There was a tendency towards innovation. An arrogant feeling that the Sung were at the cutting edge meant that there was disrespect for what went before, and so the traditions of the Tang dynasty were ignored or even adapted. The calligrapher, Sai Xiang, was a man of the time, a polymath, an official in the northern Sung, engineer and also a tea expert, as we learned in the previous episode, He had a reputation for fighting against corruption. His chosen weapons were calligraphy, drawing and poetry. In the Sung dynasty, this made him a very powerful man indeed. He could bring down corrupt officials with a wave of his brush or pen. One reason why, perhaps, Emperor Runzung kept him close at hand. What's the saying? Keep your friends close, and your enemies even closer. But it was very much the relationship of a ringmaster placing his head in a lion's mouth. The Emperor certainly held him close, and often made fun of him in front of others. Tsai certainly knew better than to answer back. Inevitably, he fell out of favour with the arrival of the new Emperor Yingzong. His calligraphy style was described as simple, pretty and cute, equally vigorous and rhythmical and sometimes feminine. Either way, he was soon regarded as one of the greatest calligraphers of the Sung dynasty. At heart, Zai Xiang was a conformist, 
and tended to stick to tradition. However, the Song Dynasty was all about innovation and change, which sometimes made Tsai seem out of step. The spirit of change was exemplified more by the others who became known as the four great Song calligraphers, such as Su Shi, Ni Fu and Huang Tingjian, whose work was often bolder and more unrestrained. In general, the calligraphy of the Song was focused on expressiveness and innovativeness and belittled classical or traditional styles. In truth, Zaixiang was a dying breed. Those that came afterwards had to admit that they had opted for innovation because they had no one to teach them the old school techniques. If you were a court calligrapher, the last sentence you ever wanted to hear from an emperor in the Song Dynasty was Whose calligraphy is better, yours or mine? Of course, the political answer was always Your calligraphy is the best of all emperors and my calligraphy the best of all ministers. Many emperors in the Song Dynasty had pretensions to being great calligraphers, although not all of them had the skill to back it up. Two emperors who bucked the trend were father and son, and ruled during a crucial period of the Song Dynasty. Jiao Ji, Emperor Huizong of Song, caused the fall of the Northern Song. As prince, he excelled in calligraphy, painting, history, riding and archery. But as emperor, he was corrupt and incompetent, albeit a talented and capable artist. After a reign of 25 years, he abdicated and passed the throne to his eldest son, Emperor Qin Zong. And a year later, Hui Zong was captured by the Jin Dynasty to the north. He died in captivity in the city of Wu Guo. In his trademark slender gold style, he wrote books called The Thousand Character Classic, a poem on luxuriance and fragrance, two poems on desire to borrow wind and frost, poem on a peony, poem on fancy rocks, autumn moon in leap month, and poem on a summer day. Not exactly literature aimed at winning wars, In 1126, after the Jin seized the northern Sung capital city of Kaifeng and took away his brother and father, Zhao Go was enthroned emperor in one of the dynasty's vice capitals, so founding the southern Sung dynasty. Zhao Go, aka Emperor Gao Zung, was, like his father, an addict of calligraphy. For example, when he fled southward with fear like a stray dog, he reached Lin An, part of present-day Hangzhou, and established a new capital. There he promptly had a poem inscribed on a stone and gave a book of poetry to all his officials so that they might have a personal connection with him. Emperor Gao Zong originally learned calligraphy from the great master Huang Tingjian, but he abandoned his style later on. Why would this be? Why turn his back on such a master and teacher? There was a simple answer. It was protection against espionage. The old enemy to the north, the Jin, ordered calligraphers to study Huang Tingjian's work so as to forge the imperial signature on decrees. Gao Zong discovered the attempted fraud and changed his style so it couldn't be copied. It was crucial for an emperor to prevent his signature from being imitated by anyone else especially since, at the time, he had just ascended to the throne and both his father and brother were still alive, albeit they hostages of the jinn. At any time, they could return and topple him from the throne. His signature, a sample of calligraphy, was a sign of his legitimate supreme authority. A quick word here about a chap called UFA. We mentioned him in the previous episode. He was a military general, poet and calligrapher who fell foul of his imperial masters. UFA is best known for leading the forces of the southern Sung against the Jin in the north. 
despite his loyal service, and probably mainly because he kept asking the jinn if they could have their hostage emperors back, he was tried on concocted treason charges. Hauled before the court, his shirt was ripped off to reveal he had a tattoo etched across his back. Four Chinese characters, Jin Zhong, Bao Guo, which means serve the country with the utmost loyalty. On seeing this, there were cries that he should be released as a patriot, but it was to no avail and he was put to death. One report describes how the warders in the prison where he was held took up ropes and strangled Yue along with two other men. And when the men returned to heaven, suddenly a fierce wind rose up wildly and all the fires and lights were extinguished. Black mists filled the sky and sand and pebbles were blown about. Which just goes to show that you should never mess with a calligrapher. So we now know that calligraphy had a special place in the lives of the Sung. Superficially, it was an example of high art and skill. Both these were things the people of the dynasty held in high esteem. But it was far more than that. It was power. Calligraphy could destroy corrupt officials in the same way that satire is often used today. And because of that, calligraphers had enemies, even imperial ones. In the right hands, however, the skill was a thing of beauty and a force for change and good. Special thanks go out to San Lian Jung Du for their help in creating the content for this show. This is Bob Jones. Thanks for listening. Join me again next time. This has been a China Plus podcast. If you like the show, please give us a rating and be sure to subscribe wherever you listen. If you've got any questions or feedback, please feel free to contact us via email at podcast at cri.com.cn or find us on Twitter, China Plus Pods.